truth, lies, shenanigans. All right. Gianni, Gianni. So you got a young kid in D.C. who was killed. So talk to us about it. Yes. So this has been a hot topic in D.C. Um, on all sides. So for the past week, 13-year-old and a 13-year-old and his two friends were out at about 4 in the morning um, apparently stealing cars. The 13 the 13 allegedly. Year old, his name's Carl. Allegedly. Allegedly. We got to make sure we say allegedly. <laughs> yeah. Allegedly stealing cars. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, the 13-year-old Karan Blake was shot by a vigilante. Um, there were recent car thefts in that area, and the homeowner saw Karan uh, near the cars, like I said, at 4 in the morning, and thought the kid was stealing cars. He ended up shooting him, um, and very little details are being provided by police, including the name of the shooter. So this has sparked a lot of outrage, um, like we said, on both ends. So I just wanted to bring this to the panel and see what everyone's thoughts are. Let's start with Rob. What are you thinking, Rob? Uh, man, it's, you know, I, I don't want to beat on a dead horse, but too many guns, too yeah. many people. It's, it's, it's awful, absolutely awful. My heart goes out to the Blake family to lose, lose a child so quickly, violently, and tragically has to be heart-wrenching uh, for the community, his friends, everyone that knew this kid. Um, that's just gonna be yeah. awful. And I like how you prefaced it, uh, Johnny, just saying shot by vigilante, because at the end of the day, that's exactly what this is. It's vigilante justice. It's someone who heard something and decided to yeah, grab a gun and go walk up the street to check out what was going on, get into an altercation, and then as a result, you know, so I understand, of course, why this person's name isn't being released at this time, because I'm sure that it's under heavy investigation. Oh, you understand and it. To Interesting. It's to protect this person's identity until there's a proper investigation done i don't know like it's messed I, up it, it's so weird you, it, it really really is yeah it's 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 well let, let me first ask so gianni you you uh you, you've had your car broken into a couple of times <laughs> that's not funny <laughs> <laughs> but no but but, but on top of that you own a gun too right I do too. Yes. So uh, let me just ask you: Do you? I mean, do you understand where this guy's coming from? Where, you know, he potentially, you know, might have seen a thirteen-year-old hanging out by his car, and and then just thought he was stealing his car, or stealing a car, or messing with cars, or whatever he thought. You know, would you have like, uh, I don't know, possibly? Shot I him? definitely. I definitely, that's very interesting because immediately I'm like, no. Um, but to play devil's advocate, there has been a point where it's like, because it happened to me multiple, a few times, like I, my car was, you know, robbed. <laughs> so at one point I was like, what if I just shoot? Like I would be in the right if I just like shot them in the leg or in the butt or just in the air. Mm. And I, I have to be honest with that because at the end of the day, I don't know if these young men are going to come into my home. You know what I mean? I'm a single woman. I live by myself. I have a dog, but it's like a safety thing. I think that when you're in that know, but you're anticipating home, something that, I mean, that, you know, you're not in, you're not an immediate threat, right? Of somebody coming to your home. I mean, the 13 year old wasn't going to, wasn't going to rob him. And, and I mean, he's a 13 year old kid, right? He's not going to rob him and take all his money. He's not going to mm -hmm. rob him, but I don't want to, I don't want to like, I do, what I don't want to do is kind of like let go of the fact that he was allegedly possibly robbing cars or doing whatever pr criminal act. And that doesn't mean that because somebody's doing that matters into your own hands, but it's almost like consequences to actions type thing. Um, yeah. But yeah. And we do have, we're do, we are fortunate because Lizzie is online. So she's joined us in the chat and she is saying, you know, let the record show that the teens arrived in a stolen vehicle. So, I mean, it does lend credence to the story that they were up to some shenanigans, as okay. some are wont to do. Um, and an interesting question from uh, Jacqueline Robinson is where, the one question no one is asking is, where were the parents or guardians? Why is a child out on the street at 4 a.m.? Let's have that discussion. Exactly. Thank you. 
Yeah, I, I mean, also, go ahead, go ahead Nia. No, you go. Um, I wanted to say this reminded me so much of the Trayvon Martin situation. Like, whenever I saw this, I was like, this is like going back to what 2012 or what year that was. Um, I felt the emotions of the people that were gathered at the town hall to get answers. I like was feeling it with them. I wanted to cry, but I couldn't help but think like, while you guys are, you know, coming together for the sole purpose to get, and that was to get justice. My thinking is why can't we do that without the court or the town hall? Like communities should start to implement some actual system of protecting our no, our own neighborhoods correctly. And I know people have like weird feelings about that because they're like, um, where, where does that line draw? Like who would be taking over and what kind of power would we give them? But I think that's more protective and if and it's more tight knit um, to be able to protect your community that you know so well, like you know your neighbors, you would protect them like they were your son. So I feel like we need to that's get fair. back into implementing some type of like community-based protection, not the neighborhood watch. Please stop that. <laughs> <laughs> Stop with the I, was gonna, I mean but this but this is um but we're talking about like you know like you said a vigilante you know who decided to take on the actions of um what the police should be doing i mean you should be calling the police you should be saying hey you know there's someone outside messing with some cars i see them yeah you watch neighborhood watch but you're not there to shoot and kill a 13 year old but um i just want to point out some comments online um because there's a lot of this mm -hmm. going uh, a lot of this. so um yeah lizzie says uh people need to understand the climate of violence in teens at the moment in dc violent car jacksons and thefts are the norm in dc right now i know that there is that TikTok thing going on especially for these young kids uh looking for uh where they teach you how to steal uh, Kias and Hyundai. Me. Yeah. Oh, I have a Kia. Yeah, they, they teach you how Don't to, that's probably why you are uh, probably getting attacked. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's been like a thing. No, seriously, it's, it's been a thing for like the past few months of people going after uh, certain years of Kias and, um, uh, and, and they're going actively after them because of TikTok. Um, but yeah, so I don't think it's just a thing in DC. Um, it just had, you know, but there has been some, a lot of carjackings and things going on as well. Uh, Kevin Thaxon says it's extremely unfortunate for the family. There are numerous carjackings and thefts in DMV. I have mixed feelings about this, and that's how I feel. I have I, I have mixed feelings too. I think the reason I have mixed feelings though is because I think it's kind of strange for for it to be a week out and police officials have not told people exactly what happened, who the person was who did the shooting. You know, it feels like they're protecting somebody for some reason. I, I don't know exactly why or who it is, but I feel like it is frustrating when you don't get the information you're looking for. Um, usually when we have these press conferences, you know, they pretty much tell, here are the details that we have so far, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, this, yeah, we have an active investigation, but they have a suspect. They, it's not like they're looking for somebody, so why can't we get information on what they believe may have happened, what is alleged? etc um and they also said that the uh the person who did the shooting was a dc employee who works for uh uh muriel bowser and but they're not a apparently really? they're not in law enforcement yeah um those are true those are true details that came out about the yeah those are the uh, person those are the only facts that we know so far is that um you know he's a he was definitely a dc employee and he's also a um not in um public protection uh let's see i just feel Go ahead. no i was gonna um i was just gonna add i just feel like we it's so hard this is why i'm so excited for this new generation coming up because not all of them as we can see but because i feel like they implement something where it's like solution based. I know that whenever um, we do things like come together, like I said, and then the protesting and then communicating and awareness and stuff, I feel like it needs to be more proactive, like an actual system that's put in so that we don't even have to necessarily um, go back and forth with police and try to figure things out. I just, mm -hmm. I just feel like it's, it's, 
it's going to be the same thing. Like this is going to be the same thing. It's a deeper issue than what is being seen. Yeah. Uh, I just want to point out, Lizzie says, uh, what we do know is that the black, the shooter's a black male, DC government employee. Also want to point out that he did have a concealed carry license and the firearm was registered. Um, but he's not law enforcement. I do also, I, he did, the man was the one who called 911 and was performing CPR when the officers, CPR when the officers arrived. Um, what? Yeah. So he was. That's interesting. Yeah, so he was actually trying to save the child. Um, um, so it's hard to say. The problem is it's hard to really have a really strong opinion about this because we really don't know what happened. You know what right. I'm saying? Uh, you know, right. this wasn't early on. There were some questions as to whether or not this was a, a white on black crime, you know, similar to Trayvon Martin. But turns out that this is really not like Trayvon Martin at all. I mean, um, again, I, I know. Why? We, well, for one, this guy, this child does appear to have been stealing cars. I mean, all the evidence points to that at this point. But again, we just don't have enough information. It's still only alleged. Um, Trayvon was walking home. He was just walking home. Right. And, and on top of that, on top of that, um, you know, you know, it, it wasn't a, um, a, diff a racial difference here. Uh, divide. Mm -hmm. It was a, a black man shooting a, a black child so it's a little bit different yeah. than trayvon but if the details yeah. yeah it has a it has a feel of trayvon in the sense that Absolutely. you know a young child was was murdered and we don't have a lot of details randomly what were you saying rob oh you want to say anything i don't I recall ready. i do i think <laughs> i was just on board and it was just kind of like the conversation karen's like okay yeah no we're good we're good yeah all right, <laughs> all right. Some more comments online. Um, Liz is still on here. So uh, Trayvon was walking to his father's house, minding his business. These teens were presumably the act in the act of committing a crime. Uh, she also says three weeks ago, a woman, an elderly woman, was violently carjacked by a group of teens in the uh, in D.C. Um, in PG County, a 12-year-old was just arrested for killing someone in a carjacking. So there's Jeez. a yeah, there's a there's a rash of carjackings going on. And, and what that does is that creates it creates a climate in the community, it creates a climate. And so to, for someone to go out, maybe seeking some vigilante justice, because it's something that's going that's getting out of control. I can I understand yeah. how that minds. Why, I can understand how someone might slip into that mindset. And I yeah. guess for me, again, it just raises the issue of the proliferation of weapons in the United yeah, States, yeah. because again, another young black man has lost his life before it even started, man, like at 13. Yeah, yeah it started, baby. man. Yeah. I mean, I guess the question was, was he really protecting himself? We don't even know that. And, and again, without, so he did say, um, the DC police chief said that this sh for shootings to be justified, a person has to be in fear of their lives or the lives of others. And uh, Olivia online says, I would only ever shoot if my life or life is an, or life or a life is an immediate threat. Um, yeah. And that's why I don't need a gun. I think everything is a threat. <laughs> so she'd probably be shooting everybody <laughs> apparently. See, and that's what I keep saying about American culture. It's people who are scared of, and are arming themselves to feel secure. So I'm glad that Olivia has enough sense to recognize that she does feel threatened by society and having a gun wouldn't be a good idea. Because in most cases, it is not a good idea for people to carry a concealed weapon, a firearm. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. weapon at the end of the day. It's true. It's meant to kill. A deadly, and a dude, deadly weapon. When, when you're saying that, you know, hey, you know, I might pull the trigger and shoot him in the leg or I might shoot him in the butt, you're a crack shot, man. And if you hit the femoral artery, then forget it. They're, they're bleeding out. They're done. So, I don't know. It's what, what, I still don't understand why this 13-year-old was allowed to be. I mean, we, we're not talking, and similar to what uh, Jacqueline Robinson was saying, we're not talking about the fact that a 13-year-old was out at 4 in the morning. Out at that time. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're the that, parents here. I mean, and that's it. He, I say this if this thing. kid wasn't out messing, messing around with cars at 4 a.m., he, he would still be alive. No question. Maybe something is happening in his own, you know, young personal life to where he felt he had to be doing something criminal with friends. A lot of these kids come from yeah. situations that we 
probably won't understand. Not to take away from your experiences as, you know, growing up because nobody, but I just feel like for them, for a lot of the kids, just speaking from my own personal experience with the kids in that this this neighborhood, it's very ghetto, like I told you guys. And it's like these kids are super, um, it's just a different mindset, a different breed almost. It's like the way they think and process things. You make a good point. Yeah. Rob and I, in pre-show, Rob, you know, because I'm from D.C., uh, Rob was asking me what's it, because it was on Quincy Street in D.C., what the area was like. And I was letting him know. I was like, well, it's an area that was predominantly black um, and poor for many years. Um, but it started being gentrified because Metro, uh, the subway stations came through and were recently built there. And so there is a huge divide, even just from uh, block to block of, yeah. uh, you know, it is. demographics it is. of wealth and, 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 um, poverty. So you may have a, a group of, uh, you know, places that were previously considered ghetto, um, quote unquote ghetto, right next to places that were condos that are like, you know, charging five thousand dollars for a studio. Uh, you know, so right. you know, you you're you're looking at a huge gentrification issue. And so yeah, it could be a social economic issue where you have these kids um, just trying to survive. You know, doing these you know, by joining these car rings and things like that, just trying to get by in a, in a city that is extremely expensive to live in right now. So, yes. Good point, Johnny. All right, so is this, there's a bunch of more comments online. Let me, let me get to a couple more comments um, and then we'll, I'll ask the question. Uh, let's see, Lizzie says, daddy was online posting receipts of how much money he spent on the kid's funeral suit, $1,800. Uh, Kevin Thaxton, uh, but a number of the followers, a number of the kids are followers. Uh, I came from those same neighborhoods. Petworth has always been sketchy. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Criminals have to, have to work hard. Office workers rarely do. Um, Lizzie says it's a black middle class neighborhood. Mm. All right. So is this truth? Lies, shenanigans. Shenanigans. Unfortunate truth. It's a sad truth, man. I'm calling it shenanigans. There's some shenanigans going on with this Ooh. DC employee person, and they're keeping it all a secret for some reason. I want to know who Good it point. is. I think I think something's going on with that. I mean, sure, there's some truth in the fact that you know he may have been stealing cars, and but there's something going on with that. I just want to know who it is. So. I'm calling shenanigans. Yeah. 